Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a couturier? That is, a fashion designer who manufactures and sells clothes that have been tailored to a client's specific requirements and measurements, and that fit to absolute perfection. Or perhaps you've had a piece of clothing made exclusively for you, something that doesn't hug too tight or pull away, but rather sits tight just where you want it to fit tight, just tight. Rudolf Ramsayer grew up in Switzerland and moved with his family to Tasmania at the age of 14. He didn't always dream of being a couturier, but once he found it as a career, his talent became obvious. Rudolf, welcome. Tell me, what are your early memories of living in Switzerland up until the age of 14? Oh, gosh, where do you start? <laughs> um, well, I've got fond memories of growing up in pretty much our backyard and in a small town in sort of semi-rural area. Uh, went to school, did the usual things and yeah, and then basically got put on a plane and moved to halfway across the, the earth and here we are 30 years later. And you were 14 at the time that you moved or your family moved from Switzerland to Tasmania. Can you remember what went through your mind when you heard you were off to the Southern Hemisphere and, and Australia? Well, that was some um, big news in the, in the school, obviously, because, and I remember my class teacher getting up in front and announcing that Rudolph and his family was moving to Tasmania, that was an island south of Africa. <laughs> and yeah, so it shows you the level of education that I got. Um, did you know much about Tasmania at the time? Uh, not really, except that, my uncle had moved to Australia many years earlier and, you know, other family members had been as tourists and travelled all around. So I've seen slideshows and stories up until that point, but, yeah, it's like I'd never even been on an airplane before. Can you remember how you felt at the time, at this big adventure? Uh, of, well, um, oh, I don't know. Well, it was more, uh, it was kind of exciting and... Getting here was, in a way, disappointing because, like, a lot of things that I've been used to just weren't here anymore, and and yeah, so I was kind of annoyed. What what were the things? And, um, what were the things that that were missing from Tasmania as opposed to uh, Switzerland? Stupid things like door handles, and um, my friends, I guess. And so I actually found it quite... Because I got dropped into year nine in high school. And, um, yeah, so it was quite difficult to find a slot in the social structure that already was there and it well established. So, And then you're like the geek from another country that doesn't speak English properly. And, yeah, so I was pretty much an outsider in high school. And, Rudolf... Uh... Before we go on much further, I should get you to introduce your uh, friend there in the studio for people listening. My friend. Uh, <laughs> this is my emotional support animal. We're inseparable. Uh, Duckle Chips, she's a ten and a half year old um, miniature dachshund. Rudolph, you have very good taste in dogs. Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, the she, we would have got a pound dog, except that the relationship I was in, um, there were a lot of cats and old cats, so we decided that a puppy was the way to go. And if it was going to be a puppy, then it'd have to be a sausage dog, because both of us had had sausage dogs in as kids. And yeah, so this is how she got to be with me, Rudolph. After you, or how long after you arrived in Tasmania, did you, I suppose, begin a, a passion for couture? Um, well, let's just say my mother pushed me into that. Because <laughs> after year 12, I went back to Switzerland for a year and I was working in hospitality and just sort of trying to find myself. I uh, found pretty much that I didn't... Like, I didn't have roots there anymore. Like, like I mean, there's family and school friends from only four years earlier, but, um, I don't know, difficult to fit in there. And uh, after a year, I called mum and said, look, I'm, find me something to do. I, know I can't stand it here anymore. Yeah, so I 
got off the plane at this end and had an interview at TAFE, which was still in Launceston in the city at the time. And yeah, so basically they said, well, wonderful. We'll see you next week, <laughs> start your course. And so uh, that's how I got my training. I went two years, did fashion industry studies and fashion enterprise skills certificates. And then um, as part of the curriculum, we had to enter national design competitions. I ended up in the DuPont Awards and winning first prize. Now this was for your swimwear ensemble. Tell us, uh, a, yes. tell me about that. Well, I'd, I'd actually already completed my units, so I didn't have to do that competition, but I still had the swimwear to make for, for the garment construction part of it. And um, I just wasn't really inspired and I was flicking through this giant envelope full of print swatches from a place in Sydney. And I found this one floral, it was just really vibrant colors and yeah, so the design evolved from there and apparently it appealed to the judges because it was a bit different. So where normally you would just cut and um, stitch a seam, I'd actually applicate the floral pattern onto a plain background. So, And it did come as a rather a surprise that little old Launceston <laughs> TAFE would clean up in, in uh, such a prestigious competition. Can you remember what went through your mind when you found out that that you'd won? No, we, a whole busload of us went up to Sydney, including some of the teachers and other students who I think also had work in there. And we were all at this presentation at the Hilton Hotel. Yes, and you know, they obviously start with the runners up and because the swimwear was like the top, or like the number one kind of prize that was the last one to be announced. And it was like, oh my God. So you never thought, yeah, it was just like totally out of the blue. It's like you, I, might, I thought I might come in second or third or something, but... You're listening to Evenings on ABC Radio Hobart and across Tasmania. My name's Paul McIntyre and I'm speaking with Rudolf Ramsayer, who is a Launceston Couturier, about his time at the Launceston Tape Fashion School, winning first prize in the DuPont Lycra Awards and being a designer. How long after that did you decide to move to Sydney and further your, your well, training and career? Well, I sort of planned to somehow get to Sydney and continue at uh, the White House School because that's sort of what was recommended at the time. And, um, but then after that presentation at the DuPont Awards, there's a canapé and drinks and I was approached by a swimwear manufacturer that had a factory in Surrey Hills and they were looking for someone to do patterns for them and so then we'd arrange to go and meet and go visit the factory the next day and we all went there and they offered me a job so I said well I've got to go back and finish my my studies and because it's unit based I just went and ticked off all the boxes and left early and pretty much I arrived in Sydney with a suitcase and a sewing machine and an address to go to and that was it. Did you almost have to pinch yourself to think I'm really doing this? Oh it's well being what was it 18 and a, with a one-way ticket to Europe without any plan of what happens once you get off the plane was already an adventure I'd had, so going to Sydney wasn't quite as daunting, I suppose. And Rudolph, how important was it, do you think, for, for your career to have this hands-on experience? Well, I have to um, praise the way that TAFE operated back in those days. So it was um, the courses were integrated from start to finish. So you had your machinist training and you had your garment construction training in you know, doing assembling calico samples and you had your a whole day of pattern making and a whole day of garment construction and a whole day of design and but then you would design a garment for say a competition in one class you would then pattern make it and do all the fittings and then go and construct it so each step counted towards your final mark and um so like you basically got a broad spectrum of overview like you had a skill in in everything and which came in really handy in my first job that was in for five years and it was basically you know here's your desk off you go and i had to 
figure everything out from there. And I suppose it's what has formed me into how I am today, with problem solving all the time. And yeah. So it was really that training you got here in Tasmania, in Launceston, that set you up for a national career in the industry? Um, yeah, I mean, I've never really had a career in the industry. I've found it um, difficult to find work in the industry, like especially in the production side, basically because I am a man and um, they're useful for lifting heavy things around. But I was actually once told by an employment agent that I needn't bother applying to that company because they wouldn't hire me. And so, yeah, that kind of was one of the many things that I learned about the fashion, like the dark, that dirty underbelly of a really quite a ridiculous industry, if you ask me. What was the first thing you, you did in terms of establishing your yourself and, uh, I, I suppose, getting your designs off the ground in Launceston? Uh, well, I'd set up a studio in Holyman House on the third floor. That's a Art Deco building in central Launceston. Um, I was there for two years. I met a lot of interesting people and, yeah, so I just kind of went from there. Because I don't really do designs. Like, I don't wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, my God, I've got to draw this or else I'll forget. It's, I get a client, they need something, I work with them towards whatever it is that they want. And, um, yeah, so it's a one-to-one -one kind of thing. I don't do production for the sake of filling a rack. And, Rudolf, aside from the benefits of being able to take your sausage dog, duckle chips with you, and, uh, and I imagine have her at work every day, what are the things you love most about what you do? Almost, well, it's um, having time, I think, and a flexible... Like, I can divide my day into whatever I want to do, pretty much. And the only fixed things I've got is if I've got an appointment with a client and then I just have to make sure that whatever they need to to come for, so it might be to try something on, that that's ready for them to do when they get there. Rudolph, thank you very much for your time today. Great to talk. Thanks. Bye.